on this Wednesday as we continue to do our uh, midweek information. Um, I'd like to uh, begin today with a word of prayer and scripture reading. So I invite you to bow your heads with me. Father God, I give you thanks and praise for this day, for this chance to be with your people through the medium of the computer and the internet. And just ask, Lord, that you would continue to help us to be bond together as a community, that we would continue to pray for our health workers, we would pray for our government, we would pray for all those affected by this virus and just trust that you have shown and will continue to show us the way through. We pray this in all things in your holy name. Amen and amen. Today I'd like to read from the prophet Isaiah, the 8th chapter, verses 9 through 17. And let us hear the word he has for us. Isaiah writes, Band together, you peoples, and be dismayed. Listen, all you far countries. Gird yourselves and be dismayed. Gird yourselves and be dismayed. Take counsel together, but it shall be brought to naught. Speak a word, but it will not stand, for God is with us. For the Lord spoke thus to me while his hand was strong upon me, and warned me not to walk in the way of these people, saying, Do not call conspiracy all that this people calls conspiracy, and do not fear what it fears, nor be in dread. But the Lord of hosts, him you shall regard as holy. Let him be your fear, let him be your dread. He will become a sanctuary, a stone that one strikes against. For both houses of Israel, he will become a rock over which one stumbles, a trap and a snare for the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And many among them shall stumble, they shall fall and be broken, they shall be snared and taken. But bind up the testimony, seal the teaching among my disciples. I will wait for the Lord, who is hiding his face from the house of Jacob, and I will hope in him. Since God's word for his people, may add his blessing in our reading and hearing this day. Now, while this prophecy was originally given to the people of Israel because they had turned away from God, and they had gone after other things, and there were other prophets that were saying um, what was going to come to pass. As in any time of calamity, there are always a lot of voices that want to tell you what's going to happen. And right now, there are a lot of voices. A lot of voices that have some information, and they have some facts. And they have experts. And these are all good. But nobody has all the facts, because they're still coming in. Nobody knows exactly how all of this is going to play out because it hasn't finished playing out. And so there are people who will scream this is a conspiracy theory or those people over there don't know. You can't trust them. You can only trust us. And I think we should be cautious. I still think we should trust our government. We should trust some of what we hear from the news. And we should trust our doctors. But more than anything, we should trust in our God, in the fact that, you know, while we don't know what exactly is going to happen, what we do know is that God is with us. And if God is with us, no virus, no pandemic, no fear, no economic stress, no calamity is going to be able to come against us. Yes, there will be hard times. But we can rest assured knowing that our security our security is in the Lord, who loves us and is for us. So I do believe that as things start to change a little bit and our community is going to change a lot, we've got different states starting to open up, including ours here in Tennessee. And as that happens, we're going to get um, more and more instructions. So I do believe now is the time to both be decisive and cautious, to see what it is you want to choose to believe in what you, what manners you want to continue to go with, and if you want to continue to wear a mask and stay home, then I say do that if it makes you feel safe. If you want to venture out in a way that has been opened up, then do so. 
But let us not turn on one another. Let us not begin to say, those people over there don't know, they don't care enough, or they're not, you know, getting the right information. The simple fact is, is nobody knows everything. And so what we should do is continue to do what we feel comfortable doing, but be cautious. To listen to our government and then make our own informed decision. Now, having said that, there's been some talk about when will the church reopen? When will we come back together? And how is that going to work? And I've been meeting with the session several times as we've discussed different parameters and different um, things that we can do to make people feel safe and still to be able to come back together. Now, today, or actually yesterday, there was a news release put out by our governor who said that places of worship are not the same as some of these other groups that are confined to the less than 10 people. That he understands that weddings and funerals and worship services do not have to comply to that. But, that the government will never tell us not to worship together, but they are urging us to wait just a little bit longer. To let just a few of these businesses, a few of these openings happen and see where that takes us, and then in the next week or the week following, then begin to open up more. And, well, we're going to meet with the session and, and we're going to talk this over and we'll put more out, but as of yet, we do not have a specific date for when we will gather again in worship corporately together in this building and how that will look. Some things that have been put out is that we can worship in the fellowship hall, that we can social distance by families, that we'll definitely have hand sanitizer and other things like that. Some people wear masks. Others may choose to wait a couple more weeks before they come so that they feel safe. However, it does happen. The thing is, we are one community, we are one body of Christ, and therefore we should be respectful of one another in the decisions we make to find safe and prudent options so that as the restrictions are, are opened up a little more, that we will be able to gather in safety and in compliance. Calvin wrote about people in public office, that there is no greater calling than someone who faithfully serves his fellow citizens by taking on the mantle of a mayor, or a governor, or a state representative, or a president, or a congressman. There is sacrifice. Now, there are those who those in positions like that that have forgotten us. And we should pray for them. But there are even more, especially in our local community, who do know this, and they want what's best for each of us. And so they're trying to move forward. And so out of respect for their office and their position, we're going to continue to listen to them. And I hope and I truly expect that before the month of May is over, we will be back to gathering as a church. Maybe not exactly the way we did before, but then again, you know, a little bit of change, a little bit of um, stretching is good. It's good for all of us. Um, I hope this message finds you well, and I hope that as we read through this book from Isaiah, that we will heed the words. Let's not worry about conspiracy. Let's not worry about all the confusion that sometimes happens in society. But let's first and foremost trust in our God. And remember to hold up our brothers and sisters praying for them. I hope that you are each blessed this week. And I look forward to uh, taking my sermon for you uh, at the, this week. Well, I'm going to close this out in prayer and, and we'll talk soon. Let us pray. Father God, again, I give you thanks and praise for the ability to talk with folks who are in their homes who are not here physically, but through the power of your Spirit, we are united. Through the power of your Spirit, we are made to be the body of Christ, his representation, his hands and feet in this world, in a world that so desperately needs Jesus. And so let us do that. And whenever we go to the grocery store, whenever we're out, whenever we wave at a neighbor, let us remember that we are called to be the body of Christ and show Christ forward to our neighbors. And in doing so, let us remain faithful, let us remain hopeful, and in all things, let us trust in you and your promise. 
sure and certain that yea, you will be with us, even unto the end of the ages, for you have a plan to prosper us. You have a plan to help us live abundantly. You have a plan to help us live in the love that you created us in. We pray this in all things, in Christ's holy name. Amen and amen. God bless you. Take care.